Good morning. This is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and I have with me today Dr. Sarah Farrant, and she is uh, located in New Zealand. She's done a lot of research on different methods of modalities of treating uh, different health problems, and she has a website called Vital Moms and a book called The Vital Truth. And uh, why don't you just tell us about your research and what you found out? <laughs> well, thank you, Julia. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and, and, of course, sharing with everybody. And my time in the, the health industry uh, pretty much spans 25 years. And over that time, I've seen things come and go and I've seen fads be highlighted so it's been a journey that's been up and down in terms of what I've seen but there's always been one thing that has remained constant and that is this whole understanding of how we're viewing health, how we're defining it and versus or really what health is and they're two very different ways of looking at it. So I spent a lot of time, um, I guess, being more of a philosopher and asking those questions as opposed to a researcher and uncovering what the research actually means. So what I've found in this consistency in the health industry is that when we look at our health, we define it in two ways. Firstly, we usually define it by how we feel as opposed to how we function. And we also, Julia, look at this understanding of health uh, based on how we were taught health. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what's the family health pattern and what's the family health recipe? So for instance, let me do this as an example. Let's say that you and I were in the same family and um, we have, uh, I have a great grandmother and then I have a grandmother and then I have a mother and then I have me. And the great grandmother has made this amazing bolognese uh, recipe. And you know what? That recipe, it's not written down anywhere and it's um, not handed via a piece of paper to uh, the next person down the line. It's something that is shared via our actions and we receive it via our observations, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the, mother, here's, the, here's the grandmother that got it from the great-grandmother who now gives it to the mother. It's, it's not spoken about. We just look at how she does it. And the only thing that might change along the line is the quality of the ingredients, not necessarily the ingredients themselves. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, when the recipe gets to me, I'm like, I know how to make bolognese. I know exactly what to do. And I don't even think to change the way the bolognese is made because that's the way it's always been done. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that I see you know, working with, with hundreds of families and speaking around the world, that there's this one element of health that becomes indoctrinated into us almost by this observation and our actions that has to do with health. So in other words, the people who are around us consistently, so mothers, fathers, preachers, caregivers, TV, radio, print media, and now social media, are the things that surround us, that indoctrinate us into this understanding of health. And it's usually, like I was saying first off, has to do with how we feel as opposed to how we function. And I remember, um, Julia, when I was, oh gosh, I'm going back maybe a decade now, and I really wanted to find out, well, how are people really thinking about their their health? Well, how are they defining their health? And so I had a newborn. We have three children, 10, 8, and now 6, and it's when I had a toddler and a newborn. I just had the two boys at that stage. And I went up to our local shopping mall and I stood on this strategic corner <laughs> and I, um, I, I stood there and anyone that would pass by, and, and it's amazing when you have a newborn in your arms, right? People want to stop and touch and all that beautiful. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could ask them this question. And so the question I asked was, well, what do you think health is? 
And you know what? What surprised me more was when I got home and I laid all of those answers out and then I looked for the most common piles, right, in terms of what people have said, and then I placed them into five essential groups. And this is what they came back with. This was, this was how people were defining health on this particular day at this shopping centre. Okay. And they were saying that health is about having no pain, that it's about having signs and se- no signs and symptoms, that it's about eating right, exercising, and being happy. And I, and I sat there and I was like, are you serious? That this is how we're defining health? I don't, I, I, and I couldn't understand it because for years, even as an elite athlete in, in the Australian rowing team, I was like... Why, why doesn't this have to do with... People aren't seeing function. So it became this whole feeling versus function scenario. And then I started to dive deeper into how we really do see health and looking at the world's uh, different health approaches and then placing them into these three groups that people could then say, yes, that's me, or that's me, or... That's me. Mm-hmm. So the whole, you know, function feeling debate uh, came up, and then I, what I did, Julia, was I took that understanding of um, their definition. The, these, you know, plethora of people that I'd asked on that day took that understanding of no pain, no signs and symptoms, eating right, exercising, and being happy, and I took that wider. And then I started to say, well, what are we doing in print media? What are we doing on the radio? What are we doing on the TV? And where is this kind of family pattern indoctrinating us into this thought process that it has to do with how we feel and not how we function? One of the things that I um, did as well, Julia, was I looked at the root meaning of words. I like etymology. I love what it provides for us in terms of understanding the language that we use to define what we what we mean. And one of the one of the words that I first broke down was this this word called treatment. And when we look at treatment, when we break down the word treat in Latin actually means to deal with and meant means mind. So when we look at having no pain, no signs, no symptoms, you know, eating right, exercising and being happy, Mm -hmm. we're looking at a treatment. So we're looking at dealing with our mind only. It creates this illusion that we are now healthy because we base this indoctrinated understanding of, of health on this thought that health is about how we feel and not how we function. So it was a, 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 it's now, kind of been not, an eye-opener. I'm not, I'm not quite sure I understand that. You mean if I feel people think that if they feel good and they have yep. no pain and no symptoms, uh-huh. yep. they are healthy? Yes. But you're saying maybe they aren't. Well, I'm saying that's not how you define health. Let's look at a bigger picture of how we define health. Because health is, that's where we see that a medication that goes into our body alters what's happening neurologically within our mind. That's why treatment is called deal with the mind. So we deal with our mind, we put this medication into our body. Let's just say the simplicity of a headache. We put the medication into our body, the headache's now gone, and so we now deem ourselves to be healthy again. It's not there. I must be healthy. And yet what we've done is put this, uh, you know, this laboratory-made, chemically dispensed um, piece of, you know, tablet or whatever it is that someone's taking for that headache into the body Now, even though that that's not there anymore, we're now altering the function of the rest of the body because the rest of the body has to deal with the medication that's gone in. It's got to get digested. It's got to get moved around the body. It's got to to target the right areas, which, you know, we know is only a minute amount because it targets everything else as well, hence side effects from medications. So um, it's at Vital Moms, what we're doing is that 
that given that there are parents out there, Julia, and, and you at this stage, you know, you might have been in this in, in your own situation or um, in a situation you've seen friends perhaps go through this, is that they get to a point where there's frustration enough that nothing's changing anymore and then we're taking one drug and then we're taking the next drug and then we're taking the next drug so all of a sudden we find ourselves going through into our later life on up to four to five medications at any one time some adults some of the third generation you know elderly into their 60s 70s and 80s are on up to 14 medications that i've seen oh, and it's yeah. so that becomes yeah, it, it becomes irresponsible, right? That's pharmacology and, you know, what are we doing to our body all because of this indoctrinated family pattern that passes down to us that we don't question that says health is about how you feel and not how you function. And Einstein said it so well, you know, and I'm sure you know this definition, mm -hmm. that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And yet that's what we're chasing. We're chasing that feeling as opposed to altering how we function. And in changing how we function, we then get to experience health in a different way. Well, so what we found... People, if people have no symptoms... They feel they're functioning okay, right? Well, if we go and look at Dolan's Medical Dictionary, uh, um, its definition of health, which is the definition of health used by the World Health Organization. It's also used by the chiropractic professions and other individuals. And it says this, that health is optimum physical, mental, and social well-being and not necessarily the absence of disease or infirmity. So all of a sudden... We're looking at a definition that's saying, you know what, you want to be the best that you can be. You just don't want to get above this line because now you don't have it anymore. In fact, your health is about going beyond that and reaching another level, being the best that you can be in, in these areas of life. And mm -hmm. it's saying, too, in that definition that it's not necessarily about this absence of disease, that, in fact, we actually need those disease states in order to trigger our immune response to enable us to grow. I.e., if we, if we look at our world around us, we see that we have light and we have dark. We have high tides and we have low tides. We have um, nice and we have mean. We have happy, we have sad. We have a sun, we have a moon. Um, and we have health and we have disease. So to think that you can't, you can only have one and spend your life avoiding the other, that creates an illusion within itself as well. It's like saying, I only want to be in, sun, in, in sunshine and I'm going to avoid the moon. I only want to swim when the tide's high and I'm going to avoid the low tide at all costs. You know, it just, it, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So it's important yeah. to make sure we have that, you know, that balanced um, understanding. The What I've also found interesting, Julia, was when I started to look at the world's interpretation of health and glean these into three different approaches, I also found that mums and families were coming to me kind of out of the woodwork, raising their hands saying, you know what, that's me. I'm, I'm frustrated, I'm, I'm disappointed, I'm disillusioned, mm -hmm. um, all their words because they have been indoctrinated in a system where they didn't know that there was choice. And so what I did was I devised at, at, at over at Vital Moms three different health approaches. Now these are, to clarify this point, these are completely different to the um, health professions of which there is a plethora. Right, we, we know yeah. there's hundreds of different health professions, yeah, and all professions distinctly different in themselves, not adjuncts to anything else. They're just they're just different. They're 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 on their own. And I, when I started to look at them and and um, see what was inside of these different professions, that's when it really helped me to work out well what are the different approaches, the three health approaches. So the first one is what's called the allopathic approach. So we all know that that's the, the medical mechanistic way of doing health. But when I started to break down that word and look at that root meaning of it, I saw that pathic actually means remaining passive.
And I thought, well, that's really interesting because that is a health profession where you go to someone to get something, to take something away. You deem that person to be you, you deem that person to be more educated than you about your own body. So you're entering into a system where you're just going, tell me what's wrong with me. Give me what I need to have this go away because, you know, I'm saying that health's about how I feel and I don't feel too good here, Doc. Give me something. <laughs> and so we remain passive, you know, and that's where they can do the medications because mechanistically that's how they see the body, that you are a sum of all these parts. You know, we'll put you them need, all together. You need a little oil or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we won't worry about where all those side effects go because the one thing that you wanted to change is now gone. So we enter into this remaining passive system. And then the the next health approach is called the alternative. Now, these two have been around for a while, right? But when I started to organize that world's health information, it kind of started to make a lot more sense. Um, anything that is not dispensing drugs or medication of any kind mm -hmm. is placed in this bucket called the alternative. So if you're not over here being the mechanistic medicinal medical doctor, you're now mm -hmm. here in the, what's called the complementary and alternative medicine bucket. You're right. And when you break down the root meaning of, the, of alternative, native, most people think means whole or, um, you know, of the earth or, um, uh, you know, nourishing kind of uh, interpretations or definitions. But in actual fact, when you look up native, native means offering a choice. So here we have this remaining passive Go to someone to get something to take something away. Now I don't want to do that anymore because I'm ins going insane doing that process because nothing's shifting and changing. So I'm going to jump buckets and I'm going to go to the alternative because it is the most close, closely aligned bucket to the allopathic approach doing the same thing, but now we're just going to offer you a choice. I still have the same language. I look quite similar to the allopathic approach. I might even wear the same clothes as the allopathic approach. I might use the same processes and the same language. So now all of a sudden I'm now in the alternative, and now I'm just going to do something different. So instead of having aspirin over here, I now have willow bark. Instead of having antidepressants here, I now have St. John's wort. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the same thing, we're still treating something, but now I have a choice as to what I want to put into my body to take that sign and symptom away to raise my hand to say health is about how I feel and not how I function. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, and then what, I, what I did was when I looked at this bucket, because there was only two buckets for many, 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 many years until I said, ah, there is a third bucket that we're not looking at that everybody in this bucket seems to be talking about, but it's confusing the consumer. So what I did was I, I pulled out certain aspects of this third health approach and I gave it a name and I call it the alternate. And nate in Latin means inborn. So now it gets really interesting, right? Because the first one has to do with remaining passive, go to someone, tell me what's wrong with me, I'll take whatever I need because you know more about my body than me. And then we have this next one that says, I don't want to do that from a chemical laboratory, I want something natural. Not realizing that native actually means just offering you a choice. You can have that one or you can have this one. And then the next bucket then is about the inborn ability. So you can see how these two on either side are absolutely the antithesis of each other in terms of this one remains passive, being allopathic, and the alternate. So it's all about your inborn ability to heal, shift, and change. And at the center of this one is the neurology of the body. So the nerve system being the master communicating system from the body to the brain and the brain back to the body, sorry, the brain to the body and the body back to the brain, um, has us see that this bo our body is made like a superhighway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this superhighway has this kind of like, maybe if we go back to the analogy of the bolognese, it's like spaghetti. 
is going everywhere within our system. Okay. And then we have these, at times, we, at, at, at times we create these roadblocks, right, those robots. A, a roadblock suddenly gets gets placed, but we create that. It doesn't. Life isn't happening to us in this particular health approach. We are the master of the, you know, the captain of the ship and the master of the destiny, as Mark Twain would say. And so when we when we look at the body and how these roadblocks can then be formed in the body, we see that there's a physical component, a chemical component, and an emotional component. And then once those roadblocks get established, that then creates those signs and symptoms within our body. We then then have the opportunity in this particular health approach to go, okay, at the seat of this will be our nerve system. Questions like, why did I create this in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, making, making sure that we're looking at that physical, chemical and emotional um, understanding and here we see that health is all about how I function it's about is that your is that mine no sorry I'm nothing off <laughs> I didn't have all mine off after I tell everybody else to be sure they have theirs off <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> that's okay that's okay um, so how so when we look at this master communicating system being our nerve system that we recognize that in creating those different roadblocks that we have created it. Someone didn't come in and, and place it there for us, that it's based on our perceptual understanding of how we view the world, we then create that for an opportunity to grow. But at the seed of it is the nerve system. So it has to do with function. Here we have to do with feeling, function versus feeling. And what I've found is that when we have that flea health recipe, Julia, passed down and we do become part of this indoctrinated system, we don't have choice. It just is. It's just the way it's always been done and, and we don't question it. And I, um, at Vital Moms, encourage families, whether I'm working with them personally, whether I'm working with them in a, an event or a seminar or however it is, I encourage them to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the question that starts off could be as simple as, why did I create this in the first place? For what reason? For what benefit? So remember we said that everything is seen within balance within, um, within the body and within life. You know, we have that same balance within our body. We have toxic and tonic reactions occurring at the exact same time at the in the body. And we have this sodium and potassium pump at a cellular level that, that um, crosses the cell membranes. And, and one's a positive charge and one's a negative charge. And then we have, um, you know, the extraction of that, like I was saying before, we take that outside of the body and we see that positive and we see that negative everywhere. So we can't get away from when we create that opportunity within ourselves to create those signs and symptoms for the benefit of changing our lifestyle and changing how we do our life, that we can't get away from, or I don't believe that we can get away from, looking at the benefit of why we created it in the first place. We're kind of we're getting out of time here. And you wrote okay. an article for us at uh, tvbackstory.com. I'd That's like right. everybody to go there and read your article, any viewers who are watching this, and um, see, you know, your links to your book and your website and uh -huh. Read more about what you've been telling us in this interview. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, you might go I, uh, ahead and tell us the name of your website as well, Sarah. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for encouraging people to go read it. That's, that's great. Um, the website, well, if people would actually like, I have three gifts that I'd love to give um, people to help them, you know, start to ask these questions. And if they go to www.vitalmums.com, that's mums spelled the American way, M-O-M-S dot com forward slash three, the number three, and then the word gifts, G-I-F-T-S. Okay. So, 
vitalmums.com forward slash three gifts. Okay. And there we've got, I've got an audio for them. I've got a report there, which is all about health choice. And it goes through in, it kind of dives a little bit deeper in what we've spoken about here. Um, and there's the uh, e-zine, you know, people register to get the e-zine, which is health tips from us that we get monthly, we send out monthly. And then there's also the opportunity to have a conversation if someone wants to pick up the phone and go, oh, I'm frustrated, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, great, let's hold your hand. You know, I'm a mum of three little kids, a busy mum, and, you know, travelling the world speaking, and I speak to heaps of mums. So if you are one of those people, then let me know, and, and we'll see how we can um, assist you. And then people can just go to the website, Julia, which is vitalmums.com, and see what we've got there. And it is a membership site where we've broken down all the different health approaches um, under different, what, what most people would call sickness. At Vital Mums we have a very specific language and rather than sickness we call it health expression. Mm -hmm. So we have a health expression list okay. where mums can come in according to the age of their child and they can press like a toddler button and it comes up with all the health expressions for a toddler and then it divides that health expression up into the three health approaches. So mums are getting a, they're getting their hand held in terms of, okay, if you want to leave this approach and go here then there's this safety net here for you to be able to experience that so we're, and there's a cinema as well a cinema okay. experience yeah well, thanks for being with us today you're welcome thank you so much for having me i've enjoyed getting up early and uh, sharing with you so so thank you